So what I'd like to do is introduce the idea of box counting and the box counting dimension gradually through a series of examples. And the idea behind box counting is to count the number of boxes or squares or shapes needed to cover a certain object. And then we look at how that number of boxes changes as the size of the box changes. Easiest to just dive into some examples. So the first example I'll do is a line, a line segment. And let's say for simplicity that the length of this line segment is um, one. And we'll do other lengths later. So I'm going to keep track of two quantities. First, um, the size of the box, maybe I'll call it the side of box, and I'll call that S. And then the number of boxes that we need to cover. And I'm going to call that N of S. And I'm going to fill out a table, and I'm going to fill that table out by counting boxes. So what do I mean by counting boxes? So here is a grid, so I can lay a bunch of boxes on top of this line. And these boxes have a length that the side of each box is a quarter. Why do I say that? Well, because this length is one, and they're one, two, three, four. So I made these boxes so that the side is a, a quarter. So for the first uh, part of this experiment, got a different color. The side is going to be a quarter. Okay. So then, how many boxes does it take to cover this line? Well, one, two, three, four, and I've covered it. So maybe I'm going to decide to sort of always line the box up to the left, and then I can see that just about exactly four boxes cover this. So the idea is I want to have boxes that completely obscure the shape, cover all of it. So I just need four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So number of boxes needed to cover is four. So far, so good. Now, what if I used a different size box? So here's a piece of uh, clear plastic with a different size box. And in fact, the side of this is half the side of that. And you can see that maybe right by doing this. So here they overlap, and you can see this is a big square, that's a big square, and there's two uh, there. So then the question is, how many of these smaller boxes would I need to cover the line? Well, certainly I'm going to need more boxes, because the boxes are smaller. How many more? Let's see. All right. Oh, and so the side of this box is a half of the big box. The big box was a quarter, and half of a quarter is an eighth. So side of box S is an eighth. And the number of boxes needed to cover, well, let's see. All right, I'm going to line this up, and then I'm going to count. There's a re reason this is called box counting. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Aha, okay, eight boxes to cover the line. And you can probably guess what's about to happen. Let's try a smaller box still. These boxes are half the size of the previous ones. You can kind of line them up this way again and see. They're, um, this side was an eighth, so this side is half of that. That would be a sixteenth. Okay, here's a sixteenth. And now, how many boxes does it take now? Let's see, there's probably not a lot of suspense, but I'm going to count anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It takes 16 boxes to cover the line. And we could keep going, uh, but we'll stop here. This seems like plenty. And so now the question is, what does this mean? What are we going to do with these numbers? So what I'd like to do is come up with an equation that relates n of s to s number of boxes needed to cover a shape, how does that depend on s, 
the side of the box. So if we look at this, we can see a nice relationship. Right? There's a 4 and a 1 over 4, 8, 1 over 8, 16, 1 over 16. And that suggests to me the following. That n of s is just 1 over s. Um, to see that, let me just plug in a number. Uh, let's try the middle row. n of s is 8. Then 1 over, what's s? s is an 8. And that is indeed true. 1 over 1 over 8 is the same thing as 8. How many 8s are there in 1? There are 8 of them. So n of s is 1 over s. And we could write this uh, the way as 1 over s to the 1. 1 over s to the 1 is the same thing as 1 over s. And um, I hope I'm not giving away the punchline, but this 1 is here. Why? Because this line is one-dimensional. Um, so let's see what happens if we do a similar sort of game for a different shape. So let's carry out a similar analysis for a square. So here's a square, and it's supposed to be a solid square. That's what these diagonal lines are supposed to indicate. Um, I didn't want to use up the entire pen coloring this in all the way, and it also would have made dangerous pen fumes. So this is a solid square. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to ask, how many boxes does it take to completely cover this square? And how does that number of boxes, ns, depend on the side s? the box. So as before, um, let's say that this distance is 1. And I'm going to start with boxes that I'll have chosen to have a side of a quarter. This is the same, same sheet as before. So the side here is a quarter. And the number of boxes, well, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 13, 16. Okay, so the number of boxes is 16. So again, we're just counting boxes. I mean, we could see a pattern here, maybe we don't need to count. But in general, if we're not sure, we just count up the number of boxes. Boom, there it is. So now, what would happen if I wanted smaller boxes? So again, I'm going to let the size of the box go down by a half. So I'm going to use these smaller squares, and that's going to be a half the, the side of the previous one. So what was a quarter is now going to be an eighth. So how many boxes does it take now? Well, we know it will be more. The boxes are smaller. Let's see how much smaller they are. So here we go. Counting now is going to take a little while, but I can do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 61, 62, 63, 64. Okay, so there are 64 boxes that fit here. And of course, because this is a square, I didn't really have to count all of those um, 64 boxes. I could look this way and say it's 8 that way, 8 that way. And 8 times 8 is 64. All right. Let's do one more. Smaller boxes still. Let's do boxes that have a size of 16. All right. So I'm going to use these smaller boxes. Half the size as before. Half of an eighth is a sixteenth. And yet again, we can count. All right, line that up and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, 11. So I counted them all up, and I would end up with 256. Although that's actually kind of a lie. I, have to, I didn't actually count them all. What I did was I said there's 16 this way, you can count this way, and there's 16. And 16 times 16 gives me 256. But if this were some other shape, 
um, a blob, a circle, a Sierpinski triangle, you'll have to actually do all the counting. Um, straightforward enough, but a little tedious, and you would get a number. So as with the line, I'd like to look at this data and then come up with a relationship between n of s, the number of boxes needed to cover the shape, and the side s of the box. So we can see the relationship here. This 4 uh, has to get squared and then brought upstairs to be 16. 8 squared is 64. 16 squared is 256. And so this is going to have the form n of s is 1 over s squared. And let's check. Let's plug in these numbers just to see. So n of s is 64. 1 over s, well s is an eighth. Then I square that. So I've just plugged these two numbers in, into that formula. And this is indeed true, because All right. So that was exciting. Um, the power just went out here, but I think this is still recording because because um, my camera has a battery. So I'm going to keep going and hope that my computers weren't fried. All right. So uh, 64 is one over one over eight squared. Eight squared is 64. This ends up looking like one over one over. 64, and that is indeed 64. How many times does uh, a 64th go into 1? The answer is 64. So, we've played this box counting game for two shapes, a line and a square, and we got very similar formulas. They're here in blue. The difference is these exponents. Um, and the difference, the reason we see this difference is that these shapes have different dimensions. A line is one dimensional and a square is two dimensional. So um, before we go on to consider um, other sorts of shapes for this, uh, you might want to try out these ideas in the short quiz that immediately follows um, this video.